From the early 2000s to late 2010s, Thomas and Friends has had at least 14 movies and specials. Half of them are good, others are bad. And to this very day, most of them are all direct to video releases, with the only theatrical movie being The Magic Railroad. Which unfortunately was a big flop that sadly caused Britt Allcroft to step down as chairman of the show. Despite this, the idea of bringing Thomas to the big screen sparked again. In 2009, prior to the show transferring the CGI, Hand Entertainment announced that their film division was going to be piloted by a new Thomas and Friends movie. And this movie was called The Adventures of Thomas. A movie that was going to be different from the original franchise made by Wilbert Autry. The movie was planned to be set during World War II, and the film's main characters were planned to be a young boy named Johnny and his father who have drifted apart. After escaping the Blitz and seeking refuge in a cottage next to a train station, Johnny is then introduced to the island of Sodor, a place where his father actually visited when he was little but has since forgotten. Throughout the film, the two would have bonded with each other and Johnny would have gotten caught up in a conflict between the steam and diesel engines. The movie was put three years into production. It had Shade Aker attached as director, made a deal with Weta Digital to animate the CGI effects, and was pushed back a few times until it was quietly cancelled when Mattel bought out Hand Entertainment. And you want to know why they cancelled this movie? Well, to answer this big question, here are some facts on the early version of The Adventures of Thomas. Let's take a look. Fact number one. The fact that this movie was planned to take place during World War II, it was also meant to be a parallel between the steam versus diesel conflict that was present on Sodor. Fact number two. The steam team and all other characters were planned to be portrayed as real vehicles from real life. But the major difference is that instead of giving the characters gray faces like they've always had, the characters were planned to be given faces that were more similar to their smokebox doors and grills. According to Josh Klosner, this change was made so the movie could appeal to teen and adult audiences. Fact number three. Edward was planned to be the first character of the franchise to be introduced in the movie, likely in reference to the fact that he was the first character introduced in the books. He somehow gets a sign stuck in his wheels, but Johnny pulls it out. As an act of gratitude for helping him, Edward takes the little boy to Sodor in a similar way Thomas goes to Shine Time in the Magic Railroad. They would have gone through otherworldly caves and waterfalls, and in this movie's case, they reach Sodor, where it is actually a complete fantasy world where humans do not exist and only sentient vehicles. Fact number four. Some of the new characters, aside from Johnny and his father, would have included Squeak, a small pump truck or hand car, Puffing Billy, who would have likely been this really old 5-gauge steam engine, Bertha, a large rotary snow machine, who is said to be a cross between a mountain woman and a female trucker, four military boats, two of which would have been, and I'm not kidding, the franchise's first explicit romantic couple between sentient vehicles, three French minecarts who start resistance against diesels using underground tunnels, and the main antagonist of this movie was going to be Smoke a black diesel who's described as being very callous and menacing. Fact number five. The fact this movie was planned to have a steam rollery snowplow as a new character is a bit of a coincidence because years after the movie was cancelled, the franchise would later be introduced to Dustin, who is also a rollery snowplow, though he's actually a merchandising character. Fact number six. When Johnny and his father move into the cottage, he finds some drawings of trains with faces that his father had drawn. These are likely in reference to Wilbur Audrey's drawings, which are used as reference for the railway series. Fact number seven. Thomas would have been introduced in the movie at the back of Tim's sheds, simply because his coal was unlit because he was not being useful. But Johnny relights his fire and Thomas returns to life. He would have also mistaken Johnny for his father, who actually used to travel with him. Fact number eight. Toby and Emily were also planned to be part of the movie, which is very inconsistent with how they came to Sodor. 
as Toby didn't arrive until 1951 and Emily was not introduced until season 7 in 2003. Fact number 9 the way the conflict between the steam and diesel engines would have played out is that Smoke, the film's antagonist, would have launched an ambush where they start derailing the steam engines and shutting down all the coaling plants in the mountains. And then the final climax of the film was planned to be a relay race across Sodor. All hope is lost until Gordon comes back after disappearing and the island is saved. And finally, fact number 10. Throughout the movie, Johnny would travel between Sodor and the real world. He tells his father all about his adventures and tries to get him to remember his own when he was a kid. He doesn't believe him at first until he finally meets Thomas again at the end of the movie, and then the movie ends with Thomas taking Johnny and his father on a ride into the sunset. And that's it! That's all the facts in the early version for The Adventures of Thomas. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video, and if you'd like to hear more facts about The Adventures of Thomas, there's a link in the description below where you can go to a video talking about the film, and a link to the official Thomas the Tank Engine Wikia. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.